Many Christians, particularly spiritual leaders, claim to receive direct messages or revelations from God. This is very dangerous because it suggests new information is being added to what's already been revealed and completed in the Bible. Apostles and prophets in the Bible weren't just random individuals that came out and said they got a revelation from God. They must have fit certain qualifications. Several movements and denominations today claim to have modern apostles and prophets in spite of the traditional view that these roles were unique to the early church. Here are some notable examples. The New Apostolic Reformation, the Pentecostal and Charismatic movements, people like Benny Hinn, Todd Bentley, Kenneth Copeland have been known to claim prophetic gifts or be associated with movements that claim modern apostleship. These leaders often engage in healing ministries, deliverance services and prophecy over individuals claiming that God is giving them fresh revelations and directives. The Mormons or the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the President and Apostles in that movement are believed to receive ongoing revelation from God to guide the Church. The Church itself teaches that this prophetic leadership is essential for the faith's governance. Five-fold ministry churches, many churches that adhere to the five-fold ministry doctrine, which is derived from Ephesians 4.11, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers, believe that apostles and prophets are part of the ongoing structure of church leadership. Churches such as those in the United Pentecostal Church, International, or some independent charismatic networks emphasize the presence of modern apostles and prophets. Movements such as the Kansas City Prophets, associated with the International House of Prayer, claim that God is raising up new prophets to deliver his messages to the church today. People like Bob Jones, Paul Kane, Mike Bickle have been part of those movements, making significant claims about hearing from God and prophesying about future events. These groups and individuals often claim to receive direct revelation from God, which is adding to or expanding upon the Bible. They emphasize supernatural gifts such as healing, prophecy, and miracles as signs of their apostleship or their prophetic calling. Modern-day apostles and prophets in these movements are often viewed as having higher authority within their congregations or movements, sometimes on par with scriptural authority. While these movements claim the continuation of apostles and prophets, this view contrasts with the truth, which teaches that the role of apostle and prophet were foundational to the early church and were completed when the scripture was completed. Paul, the apostle Paul, was the last apostle to receive a direct revelation from God in relation to the dispensation of the grace of God and the mystery of the church which has been revealed as Christ's body, which had been hidden from previous ages. Verse 2, If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which has given me to you would, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That's Ephesians 3, verses 2 to 5. Paul himself emphasizes that gospel he preached was not received from man, but by revelation from Jesus Christ in Galatians 1, verses 11 to 12. His letters explain doctrines that apply directly to the church today, including salvation by grace through faith without the works of the law. The Apostle John was the last to receive a revelation from God in terms of future prophecy. John's revelation, written near the end of the first century AD, gives detailed prophetic visions concerning the end times, Christ's second coming, and the final judgment. If anyone ever tried to argue that the book of Revelation was fulfilled in 70 AD, John didn't write the book of Revelation until 26 years later. This is the last recorded book that we have of the New Testament, and it was given by Christ himself, as we see in Revelation chapter 1, 
verses 1 to 2. So how do we know if someone really is an apostle or a prophet? Well, we know because the Bible gives us specific qualifications. Apostles were personally commissioned by Christ, directly chosen by Jesus, either during his earthly ministry or after his ascension, like the Apostle Paul. Apostles had to be eyewitnesses of Jesus' resurrection and had the ability to perform signs and wonders by the true power of the Holy Spirit. Their primary role was to lay doctrinal foundation by being witnesses to and documenting the words of Jesus Christ. Prophets received direct revelation from God and shared these messages to edify and to encourage the church. Their prophecies were subject to discernment by others for authenticity. Over time, with the completion of Scripture, the prophetic role became less prominent as the canon of God's word was closed. Modern day words from the Lord and modern day apostles and prophets are deceived. They are telling you the Bible is not enough. They are telling you that there is something beyond it. Paul specifically instructed us when studying the scripture to rightly divide the word of truth. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 15, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. What does this mean? This simply means read and apply only what is written directly to you. Read, but do not try to apply what is not written to you. Revelations of men are extremely dangerous, leading people astray and deceiving us. In spite of this, this does not mean that God does not speak to us. He does speak to us loud and clear. But how does God speak to us during the dispensation of grace. A foundational aspect of this issue is the sufficiency of Scripture. Paul tells us in 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. In this passage, Paul emphasizes that Scripture provides everything a believer needs for spiritual growth, guidance, and equipping. This is a key principle in understanding how God communicates today. The Bible is complete, and no further revelation is necessary to guide us in our walk with Christ. That the man of God may be perfect, this does not mean that the man of God will be sinless. It means that the man of God has access to any answer that they may want in the scripture alone throughout the bible god spoke to people in various ways through prophets visions dreams angels and even an audible voice for example in the old testament god spoke directly to moses and the prophets you'll find these in exodus 3 verse 4 and jeremiah 1 verses 4 to 5 god communicated through jesus and the holy spirit at pentecost in acts 2 verses 1 to 4. However, with the revelation of the mystery which was given to the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 3, verses 1 to 6, we see a shift. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, Ward, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in a few words, whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Today, in the dispensation of grace, God speaks to us through his written word rather than through direct revelation or new prophetic messages. Hebrews 1 verses 1 to 2 tells us, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. The revelation has been fully revealed today and it is found in Paul's letters and the books of Romans through to Philemon. Once this is properly understood, then the words of Jesus during his earthly ministry can then be applied correctly. The canon of scripture is closed. 
the Bible is complete and no new revelation is needed. Paul makes this clear in Galatians 1 verses 8 to 9 when he warns that even if an angel from heaven preaches a different gospel, it should not be accepted. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that you have received, let him be accursed. This underscores that God's message is final, and we are not to expect new revelations. Jude 3 also speaks of the faith which was once delivered unto the saints, further emphasizing that what we have in the Bible is complete and sufficient. The argument that the church holds final authority over Scripture, often used by Orthodox and Catholic proponents, overlooks the fact that the authority of Scripture was established long before it was formally compiled into a canon. While it's true that the Bible as we know it was not fully compiled until around 300 AD, the individual books, particularly the writings of the Apostles, were already considered authoritative during the time they were written. The early church operated with the understanding that the Apostles' teaching, which are inspired by the Holy Spirit, were the final authority, and this is evident in how they regarded Paul's letters. For example, as part of God's Word, see 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 15 to 16. I will address this issue more thoroughly in another video. When people today say, God spoke to me, it can lead to misunderstandings. Often people mean they had a strong sense or conviction about something. Perhaps they were moved by a certain passage of scripture. We must be very cautious not to elevate these experiences or feelings to the level of divine interaction. The Bible warns us about subjective feelings and experiences as the heart itself can be very deceitful. We read in Jeremiah 17.9, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? So all kinds of things can run through our minds. Some of those things are deceptive. This is a reality. The only way God speaks to us today is through the Holy Spirit guiding us as we read and study His Word. He leads us into all truth. In the dispensation of grace, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is still very active in the believer's lives, although the Holy Spirit functions differently compared to the way he worked for the apostles in verses like John 14, 26 and Acts 2 as an example. For believers today, the Holy Spirit convicts, which is leads us to repentance, seals us for salvation and guides us into understanding the truth of Scripture. The Spirit brings to light the truth that is already in the Bible and applies it to our lives. Claiming to receive direct messages from God outside of Scripture opens the door to misinterpretation, error, and manipulation. This is why Paul stresses in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 14 and 15, that a no marvel... For Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. We are warned in Colossians 2, 8 and 9 not to be led by those who claim to have special visions, mystical experiences, as this can detract from the centrality of Christ and the completed word of God. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ, for in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In conclusion, during the dispensation of grace, God speaks to us through his word, the Bible. The Holy Spirit illuminates the scripture for us, helping us understand it and apply it to our lives. We no longer need prophets, visions, or new revelations because God's word is complete and sufficient. Seek God diligently in his word rightly divided. Rely on the scriptures and the spirit of God for guidance and be wary of teachings that claim extra biblical revelations. Catholicism, Mormonism, Pentecostalism, Orthodoxy, Lutheranism, Jehovah's Witness, SDAs and the Latter-day Saints 
the Hebrew Roots Movement, Calvinism, Arminianism are all false religions made by man. They have nothing to do with Scripture, nothing to do with God. We know how God talks to us. We either accept it or we go on deceiving ourselves. I urge you to find the truth in Christ. He paid the price for us on the cross. He rose again for our justification. We are saved by grace through faith and not of works, lest any man should boast. The Bible is enough.